Hey, hey, I'm Chris. I'm Drew. We are Cheap Ashes coming to you once again in beautiful Chandler, Arizona and the Yard Cigar Bar. Yes. Usual, usual spot here. Yeah. Hopefully next week we're going to get uh, out to the west side. And do a little filming from the west side. We'll see about that. Uh, so how was your week, man? It's good. I'm still off work. I uh, start my new, my new job tomorrow. Same company, just doing something else uh, due to my injury, which I know we haven't really talked about, but hurt my elbow about a month ago. So I've been off work. It has been both fun and not fun all the same. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's You would think, oh, I got a month off work, but guess what? Couldn't do anything because I got to move my arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like, okay. it's, like, <laughs> it's like, this is the heaviest thing I can lift, and that hurts. So it's kind of like, you know, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, I, 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 I feel you. Yeah. But at least it's an arm and not a leg. Right. Although, no, leg injuries would suck because you just can't, you can't do anything. Yeah. Hurts to walk. Hurts to get up, you know, so... Let's see, what did I do? I had a really busy week last week, man. It was just crazy. I had two football games, flag football games after school, um, dental appointment, uh, just crazy stuff. You yeah. Know? It was a long week. And luckily for us teachers, next week, at least at my school, it's the final week before spring break, get a week off. Nice. And it's a week off that I probably would have taken anyway yeah being at the weddings the saturday on the back end of spring break so uh yeah it's we're gonna be off together getting stuff prepared for the 12th yeah coming up it's real coming quick. up man it's coming up real quick two weeks <coughs> so what are we smoking today buddy ah, so we're smoking one of my favorites actually um so we're going with the murcielago from espinosa cigars um a lot of people call it the batman cigar um and it is your, it, it, I put that in your top three. 100%. Oh yeah, top three, top five. You're so always like, smoking. Yeah, them. and I mean, the best part about these is they're under 10 bucks. So that's why they I smoke are them under 10 bucks. So. Yeah. yeah. You know, I got a few that are teetering that $10 line, but honestly. Like, this this size not, here was what, 950, 930, something like that? Yeah, and it varies. It, it does vary. You, you, I wouldn't pay more than 10, 50, 11 bucks for it. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely worth it. It is. Like, it's honestly one of the few cigars, it's a $10 cigar that would be worth 15 bucks. Uh, but you don't have to pay $15 for it uh, unless you live in, like, California. But whatever. Las Vegas. Yeah. Vegas, California. Yeah. High tax states. Gross. Yeah. We were Let me get off subject here, dude. Just on the taxes. I was looking at <coughs> the taxes here in Arizona on cigars. Mm-hmm. It is crazy cheap. Yeah. What you drink it today? Um, so I got some Ziggy's coffee. Uh, we have done this before. Um, so I went with a little something a little different. And uh, normally on here I just drink like an espresso, black cold brew. I went with their Gold Rush cold brew, which probably wondering what that is. Um, so it has caramel and whatever milk your choice is usually half and half uh, I am lactose intolerant so I have almond milk nice. um, so it is mostly cold brew like this much cold brew with that much milk so it's not like have a little coffee with your milk right yeah it's like mostly most coffee. places do I mean you can look at it it's actually like you know that's brown. got a caramel color to it yeah so <laughs> it's pretty good it actually tastes like coffee with uh, caramel and milk in it not like you said milk with it, a little bit of coffee. I, I just can't <coughs> get my head around those drinks. Yeah. You know, it's just like it's all about the sugar. There's no coffee, man. It's all it, it's a it's a sugar bomb. Mm-hmm. It's exactly what it is. It's basically a, a shake or a whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it's disgusting. Yeah. Uh, today I am drinking a proper ESB from Pariah Brewing Company in. They're out of. Baltimore, Maryland. However, I <coughs> did some research. They've got a tasting room down in San Diego, and the can nice. that I am drinking, obviously, we're on the west. It was canned in San Diego. So they're doing brewing out there as well. Right. So obviously, they've got their brewery set up. And like you said, probably for that west coast distribution, that San Diego, yeah. LA, 
uh, corridor down there that's just a mecca for right. craft beer right now. They can get it into Colorado where everybody loves that craft Which is beer. actually really funny because if you think about it, anybody who's moving to California now to open a brewery is kind of silly because if you everybody's move to, moving out. <laughs> move here to Phoenix, you have California, you have Colorado, you have New Mexico, you have Nevada, you have all these beer places that you can still get to. Um, but I obviously, I don't know the business. Uh, kind of structured in California, but I'm pretty sure that it is pretty. I can tell you right now that big corporations are coming to Arizona because of the breaks they're getting yeah. from the state to get started and create jobs for yeah. for Arizonans. And, you know, PayPal came about 10, 10 years ago. Yeah. Created a ton of jobs. Uh, I know Apple has a big server farm out there as well. GoDaddy is yeah. here. Yeah. They're, they're here. This is where they started, you yeah. know. A um, lot of big companies, uh, Amazon's got, I, I think they're everywhere, but yeah. they've got a ton of big distributions here. So they're creating a lot of jobs. And, um, you know, it's, in one way I hate it. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm not an Arizona native, but I was... You know, I look at, I look back and I complain about all the California people that are here, but yet I'm a California transplant. Right. By way of Ohio, so it's not, I was not a California native. Right. But coming to Arizona from California on that first wave in the mid to late 80s, and then seeing the infrastructure of the state just change completely. Yeah. And in a lot of ways, it was for the best. It yeah. had to be. Because one thing I will give the state credit for unlike Seattle where my sister lives they had foresight with people moving in yeah the freeway system was very very smart yeah. you basically have a loop around the whole valley Phoenix Glendale out east well and it, it has the ability to widen out too they put that exactly, in exactly exactly so. so dude you've been to Seattle haven't you mm -hmm. yeah. have you ever been on the freaking freeways no I am yeah, oh I'm driving on them, my yeah. gosh it's literally a nightmare no matter what time of day yeah it is the biggest shit show i have ever seen in my life yeah. not that that state isn't a shit show but i mean it's like you gotta be kidding me yeah so i digress yeah um i'm gonna talk about this for a second it's an extra esb is extra special bitter um not a high abv you would think something with the like esb it, my sounds first fancy. thought, it yeah. sounds fancy. It sounds like it's going to be about an eight, nine percenter. Yeah. You know, it's extra special. So. Extra special. <laughs> yeah. And they call this one proper, which probably means it's done the right way. Yeah. One would hope. You know, this to me, um, I, I'm not familiar <coughs> with ESB, but it strikes me as being British. Yeah. It Definitely. just has that, it, and it has that taste. Um, you can see the color here. It's a gorgeous copper color. You know, it is a beautiful looking beer. Funk, to me, a funky smell. Yeah. You know, that, because it's what we talked about, that malt bitterness. It's not a hot bitterness. Um, I, I don't think I will probably ever drink another ESP. Unless yeah. I'm, you know, doing a taster. Uh, it's just... This ESB is not for me. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I remember like, over the years I had a few different ones um, throughout my course of adulthood. Yes. Um, and some of them definitely not good. So. It, it's not a... I, I can't say it's a bad beer. Right. Well, it I'm just, just saying for your palate. Like it your, does your, not... Yeah. Just like cigars, the beer does not sit right on my palate. Right. It, it hits the <coughs> back of my tongue and it's like... Yeah. <laughs> literally... <laughs> so yeah, that's yeah. just my take on it so i have a side of duncan to get me through there you go well on a side note too today is my six month sober anniversary congrats brother so proud of you yep it's been uh definitely a struggle but as anybody will say i'm just going to kind of go down this little bit of rabbit hole it's always the support of the friends and family and, and uh having other things to do um and Definitely a spiritual slash mental slash physical. Absolutely. It, it, it takes all, all of it. Yeah, it does. It takes yeah. all of it. And, you know, it, for somebody that was not, you know, we talk about mental health and that mental health 
wellness is something that I still feel our country is just not taking seriously. Yeah. It really is. You get your <clears throat> mental health right, man, anything is possible. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, for me, I know that, uh, you know, one of the main big reasons I decided to stop drinking was the effect it had on my mental health. Um, now, do I miss the taste of beer? Absolutely. There were some really good beers out there and I enjoyed it, but it's also one of those things that I didn't like the after effects of it, which is, you know, happens. So. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. So. But I'm still drinking. Yeah. So we can still get this, and you know. And, and and again, going back to the mental health thing, get your mental health right, great things happen. Mm -hmm. My fiance is sitting right over here, probably the best thing that's ever happened to me. And, you know, other than my two children, you know, any parent will say that this is the greatest human being alive. Yeah. And it's, you know, you have, you get your mental health right, and you, your eyes open. Yeah. And see, you see things you never saw before. Yeah. And you see them differently, too. You might oh, see the same thing. And yeah. it just completely changes the perspective. <laughs> well, again, just like going to a bar, sitting down and drinking yeah. all night. That does not appeal to me anymore. No, it doesn't. But, <laughs> you know, not saying that there's anything wrong with it as far as, you know. It's just not appealing to me. Yeah. You know, one or two, in and out. Bye. See ya. Yeah. Or, Peace. you know, hang out at the cigar bar. Have a cigar. Have a cigar. Relax. Yeah. Exactly. So, speaking of cigars, yeah, let's talk a little bit about this guy. Uh, now, for me, this is probably a little bit strong for a morning first of the morning stick for me. Yeah. Um, that's why you could see I am slow going on this bad boy right now. Yeah. Um, gosh, damn, dude, it's a spice ball. Yeah, uh, Nicaraguan. Um, definitely has the characteristics of a, a very full-body Nicaraguan, uh, San Andreas Maduro, um, just powerhouse uh, spice, but it's well-balanced as well. You get a lot of that real rich, earthy flavor, and I know we talk about that a lot. It's kind of hard to explain unless you really taste it. Um, now, when you say earthy, what does earthy mean? Well, it has that kind of almost like, you feel like you're out in the forest and you're just taking in like this, like, fresh dirt that hasn't been polluted by everything around you and you can almost taste it it just it's just so like good that's that's about the best way to describe it and so. and you'll you'll get a good earthy stick when you open the box and you smell the box and you can it almost smells like manure yeah because that yeah. kind of like barnyard barnyard uh, like real just rich full of nutrients exactly yeah. and it i remember doing that when you know back in the day at the dinner box yeah when the, the first time like way back mm -hmm. in the 90s we would probably restock 20 to 25 boxes a night per shift yeah and every time you open them everybody you, yeah. all three of us that were stickering cigars would be like just take that bundle. Just, and oh, you just, oh my God. And then you have the cedar. If they're in a cedar box, cedar line box, then you have that cedar scent with it. And it's just, it's one of those things that attracted me to cigars in the first place was the smells. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, a lot of people think that cigar smokes off pudding. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. But, you know, just like uh, some of these people that douse themselves in perfume, think they smell really good, and then you walk, they walk by you, and you're choking to death because <laughs> it is the worst smell in the world. Uh, but I don't. Uh, like my junior high kids at school that think they have to put on half a bottle of cologne every time they yes. wear it. Yes, or Axe body spray or oh, whatever dude. weird it, stuff you want to throw on it. They walk down the hall, and it lingers for an hour. Yeah. yeah. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> um... <laughs> Let's uh, recap a little bit about Eric Espinoza. Yeah. I mean, Eric Espinoza, uh, great dude. He is one of the true, like, real people in the cigar industry. And, and I, when I say that, I'm not saying that there aren't a lot of other people that are, like, true to themselves and real. But this dude will tell you how it is. He does not give a fuck. Not at all. Yeah. And uh, so he's just been doing great cigars. I mean, he's been in this industry forever. He was a rep for a long time. Um, partnered with uh, Ortega for Eddie. a long time. Eddie. And then, you know, he's doing quite well. Um, so he's got 
uh, his factory in uh, Nicaragua. Um, he has a lot of stuff made by AJ and some other other companies, factories um, as well. Um, you know, based out of the, the Miami area there, as far as like Dude, U.S. What AJ Fernandez has his hand in everything. Mm -hmm. It well, is nuts, man. I mean, that guy has a factory that can pump out all kinds of stuff, yeah. and uh, he knows what he's doing. So. I mean, but the thing is, with that, you hear about AJ Fernandez versus some of these other companies that you wouldn't even know mm -hmm. that actually make a lot more than he does. But nobody talks about the factory; they talk about themselves. Well, Whereas uh, Aganors is one. Of them. Aganors is one of the you know uh, they're like what second largest tobacco grower in Nicaragua uh, behind Placencia, mm -hmm. um, and they might even be even. I don't really know. I don't have data to, to back that up. But it's just crazy. But you know, I mean, they have a factory that's pumping out a bunch of stuff. Placencia does as well. I mean, it's. It's literally the, a lot of these companies you don't hear about, and then you hear the name, and you're like, I don't even know what that is. But then you I smoke, guarantee you smoke and one. And then you yeah. smoke one, and you're like, oh, <coughs> shit. Yeah. Where'd this come from? Exactly. You know, and, and it, it's cool. Like, this is, presentation-wise, this might be the coolest-looking cigar. Yeah. Band made. Yeah. And, I mean, it's changed over the years. Uh, it used to be, like, a red band with a bat on it. Now they have this kind of holographic... Uh, foil esque band that just it, pops. It, it pops, man. It's yeah. super cool. And the cool thing is, you look at the cigar, it looks like a $15 stick. Yeah. It's a box press. It's got a beautiful wrapper on it. Yeah. And I mean, beautiful. Gorgeous wrapper. Never once had a complaint about a bad cigar from anybody. We sell a batshit crazy amount of these. Mm. You know, <laughs> pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and everybody that smokes them comes back yeah. for more. And, and it's it's a solid, solid, dare I say, I, it's a little more than medium. I wouldn't. Oh, it's definitely in that medium plus the full range. Yeah, yeah. and um, I don't know. It, it, it's just like the more you get into it, the richer it gets. Yeah, and it does change a little bit throughout the cigar. It does kind of build up and develop in a little bit. It's not that singular all the way through where you're just getting the spice, 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 spice. You the get spi a lot of these complex flavors out the of it. The spice <coughs> kind of slowly but surely dissipates. Yeah. And you start to get the more earthy flavors that yeah. you're talking about pulling out of it. So it's like one of those things, either the spice goes away or you just get used to it by the middle of the cigar and you're just like, now you're tasting everything else. Mm -hmm. So, you know. This is, um, for those of you that like, um, Big bold sticks. Yeah, this is a good one to try for the first time on a clean ballot. Mm -hmm. First thing in the morning, just smoke it. See what I would, I would say, yeah. do a, do, or you know, you haven't smoked for a while, give yeah. this one a try. It's, it's really, I don't know, man. It. I <laughs> had one in forever. Right. <laughs> and we looked at it today and we pulled it, and. I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting a little woo. Yeah. It's a strong stick. Yeah, absolutely. It's a strong stick. So, All right, last call, what do you think? I mean. Cigar, obviously. Yeah, cigar, I smoke these all the time. I, I honestly, I can't even tell you how many I've smoked in my life, probably boxes upon boxes of these, so. It, well, when you would come sit here, you would come in with one, mm -hmm. smoke something else, and then go get another one. Yeah. It, it, you, you were probably smoking two a day. Yeah, some and days. Yeah. Some days, yeah. yeah. And, it, and that says a lot for a guy that can have access to just about any cigar he wanted because he goes everywhere. Yep. You know, coming back to this, it, it, it's something you want to try if you've never had. Yeah, absolutely. And one hundred percent. So many different sizes too. Um, they do make a, a Corona Gorda size called the Rubito. I guess it's more of like a Lonsdale, but it's it's the non-box press one. It's actually round. Uh, it does smoke different uh, just because it is that, that round right. uh, versus the box press. So. I would like to see a smaller. Do they make a Corona out of this? Um, yes and no. Yeah. If you can find a Corona, yeah. that's going to give you the best, um, I, I guess, it, it, you're, the smaller... It, the smaller the stick, the more complex the flavor. Yeah, they do make a Lancero, so definitely. The, the Lancero, Lancero does, yeah. 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 The Lancero is fantastic. I have had that. So for me, this beer, Pariah, 
proper ESB. I have half a beer in here and it's gonna go down the drain. Um, not because it's not a good beer, but. It's not your thing. It's just not my thing, man. It's like drinking orange juice after you just brush your teeth. Gotcha. That's kind of what the, the, the palate on my mouth right now is doing. <coughs> it gives you that, ew. Yeah. <laughs> Coffee, what do you think about that one? Um, so, I mean, it's something different for me, obviously. Um, it, honestly, um, I don't do a lot with like milk or cream or anything in, in my coffee. Uh, but mixed with this cigar, it actually brings out a little bit more of the sweet caramel uh, out of the oh, coffee nice. itself. So it nice. kind of balances uh, with a nice, strong, spicy cigar like this. Um, you know, maybe with the Connecticut, it would overpower it a little bit. But, uh, you know, I'll drink it again. Uh, I still am a black coffee drinker. So that's just my kind of go-to. It shocked me to see you. Yeah. Had that because I just wanted to try like... something different today, you know. I mean, like I said, usually it's espresso or like black cold brew or just black drip coffee, and let's try something different today, yeah. So, see what happens. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching as always, man. Went a little long today, but yeah. got a lot of stuff to talk about. Yeah. Uh, like, subscribe, follow us on Instagram, uh, cheap underscore ashes. And, uh, we will see you next week. week.